Hey everybody, I'm Chris and welcome to Board on the Floor. Today I want to take a look at setting up post-human Saga for a solo game. When it comes to setting up this board, there's many different ways you could do it because all you're really doing is using one quadrant of the board. I'm going to use the quadrant right here because I'm left-handed and it makes it easier to kind of move around. But let's start off with the left side of the board and what we have set up over there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get three landmark tokens. Make sure you don't look at them, but place them in these three areas. And then as we're exploring, if we ever reveal a map on one of these spots, we go to the landmark deck and find the related card, and then we can see exactly what we've discovered. Next, we're going to pick a recon objective card. There are two available in the box for solo. Pick whichever one you want, put it here. This can reward us with different items or resources as we're trekking around the board and chaining together these scavenge sites. Here we have our landmark deck. Then we have our level one enemy deck shuffled and our level two enemy deck shuffled. And over here, we just have our tokens. These are the deluxe upgrades. If they look different than yours, you're probably just playing with the cardboard tokens, but this came with the Kickstarter edition. I also like to keep the visible mutation token close by because throughout the game, you're probably gonna get mutated at a certain point. So just have one handy. And up in this area, I lay out dice, the boss deck, and the solo mission board. On our solo mission board, we're also gonna need our mutant threat level tokens set to the leftmost spot of that bottom track, and then four scavenge site tokens randomly placed. Along the middle here, I have all the map tiles set up at the back. This is the upgraded fortress. So we'll just put two random map tiles and two scavenge site tokens. Make sure that the scavenge site tokens are not identical. If you pull out two of the same, just replace one. And back here we have our bags with our scavenge site tokens and our story tokens. Over here, you notice the player order section. We're not using that. Neither are we going to use the victory point section over here, nor the mission victory point section up there. And over here, we have the round section. To set that up, we got to take the 10 blank morning tokens and the four specific morning tokens for our character. Start off by placing a blank token on the first and 14th round. And everything in between, shuffle up the tokens and randomly place them. As we play through the game, every morning phase, we're gonna be flipping over one of these tokens. If we happen to flip over the character token, that means we have to pull out a story token and reference our stories manual. Over here, we just have the event deck. Make sure you shuffle those cards. On the right side of the board, I have the equipment deck, the melee weapons, ranged weapons, minor mutations, major mutations, and our followers. And over here, this is gonna be the player area. Now, depending on which player you choose, when you take a look at their card, you'll notice there's gonna be a specific number for health, morale, how many boost cubes they can use, and then their starting items and their ammo and food. At the bottom here, you'll also see the starter experience points. I suggest spending them right away because if you don't, you lose them. I've decided to play with the scavenger, so I have to set up my player board specific to him. For health, he has five. Morale, he has six. Fatigue always starts at zero. Same thing with XP. And in our ready area at the top left, I'm gonna put two broadcast tokens two boost tokens. Next, we have our camp token. Then it's up to you if you want to put the level one and level two character tokens there. And we're going to stack up specific tokens according to our missions. I start off that level one stack with a final mission token, then two level one mission tokens, then another final mission token, and then another two level one mission tokens. I like to set it up that way because if you look at our solo board, we have two level one missions and each one requires you to trek over three different map tiles. For the level two stack, I place that final mission token and then three level two mission tokens. Because for the final level two mission, we have to trek four times. Then we have two ammo, two food, and we have three broadcast tokens that will go into the exhausted area on the top right. The scavenger starts with two items. We have the cult nine millimeter and the hunting knife, which are gonna be placed at the bottom of the player board. I also like to keep the four action cards close by, so as I go through each turn, I can reference them to know exactly how I can resolve that action. And then here are my character's specific skill cards. Some characters have cards in their skill deck that will only work in a co-op game, so for the solo game, you could remove those out and put them back in the box. Be sure to remove the skill upgrade cards from your main deck and keep them aside because as you move forward and get more experience and upgrade your skills, you'll be able to use them later on. For your character's main challenge deck, just shuffle it up and place it on the player board right over here. Also be sure to keep one of these black pegs close by because as you're going through the game, if you gain more than 10 experience points, you'll be able to use that to indicate it on your player board. I also keep the general reference card and the combat encounters card close by so throughout the game, I could take a look and make sure I'm doing everything correctly. For the solo game, we're not going to use any of the other recon objectives cards so they could stay in the box. Same thing for the mission scorecards, objectives cards, and progress cards. So there you have it. We have our decks, we have our map tiles, we have our player area set up. We have all of our tokens. The only difference if it was a multiplayer game is that you wouldn't actually put it on the board because each player would be using a different quadrant. But I don't mind setting it up like this because these three quadrants over here aren't gonna be used whatsoever. I'm gonna be playing all of my game right here. 
I will be putting together a video of a full solo gameplay, so be sure to check back on the channel for that. If you have any questions on the game or the solo setup, put them in the comments below. But thanks for hanging out, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.